call to order of the public works meeting this evening. Uh, we'll start with a roll call. Uh, Alderperson Ackley. Betty, are you online? Sorry, I saw you. Let's see what we got to do. It looks like Betty is not moving right now. Oh, she was on, so. What's that? Yeah, she's, just she's back. Okay. All the person, Ackley. Oh. Uh, Phillips. Here. Savaglio. Present. Um, and Ryan is not on yet, but he said he, he will hop on later on if he gets in between. Otherwise, he is, he is excused. All righty. Uh, we'll start out with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty, I think we can skip the introductions. I think everybody here is pretty much the, the, the usual. So we'll go right to approval of the minutes. Move to approve uh, the minutes. I'll second that, Betty Ackley. Okay. Motion made by Marcus, second by, by Betty. Uh, any discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Okay, items for discussion. 3.1, resolution 92-2021, September 21st, 2020, document 5.9, resolution, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to consent to the assignment of the city's agreement with waste Management of Wisconsin Incorporated for residential refuse and recyclable material transfer and tipping services to GFL Environmental Incorporated. Director Beeble. Oh. That one? There we go. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What I'm going to do is to defer to Superintendent. Jason Blasiola, he's been uh, very instrumental um, in the waste management contract uh, and our recycling program. And he can give you the background on the, the reason for this change. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Um, so waste management is in the process of buying advanced disposal. And part of the agreement with the Department of Justice is in the state of Wisconsin, waste management can acquire all the advanced disposals because they'd have too much of the market. So waste is working with GFL, which is Green for Life Environmental. It's actually a Canadian uh, firm. They've been in 23 states. They just aren't into Wisconsin yet. So some of the assets are then are being spun off to, or sold, I should say, to GFL. One of those assets is the transfer station that we currently dump at at Sheboygan Falls. So waste management is going to be taking over the advanced disposal um, location on Payne Avenue. But since we don't have routes, we just drive and dump there. Um, I guess part of the negotiations with the Department of Justice was our contract had to stay with that facility. And waste management has decided to flip that facility to GFL and take the better facility, which is advanced disposals. So Thomas, David, and I met with waste management and the new, um, I think, regional vice president for Wisconsin. Um, and he's currently advanced disposal employee. He'll be switching over and working for GFL. He's went to school in Sheboygan. He's a Sheboygan resident, and he'll be out of the Sheboygan office, which um, made it a little easier for us because we'll be working with a local person. As far as a contract, the contract stays exactly the same 
we'll just have to transition to dealing with GFL instead of waste management. Okay. Any questions for any from the committee? Do we have a motion? I'll move to approve. Second. Motion has been made by Ryan and seconded by Marcus. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Okay, we'll move on. Resolution 96-20-21, September 20th, direct referral resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a professional engineering services contract with Fulth Infrastructure and Environment LLC for the Sheboygan five-year restoration plan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with, with this agreement, this basically sets forth uh, the process to start um, doing a five-year plan to address 11 or so approximate sites along Sheboygan's Lakeshore as we have resulted in shoreline erosion with high lake levels. Fulth is the company that is currently under contract with us doing the, the South Shore Interceptor. And okay. as part of that project, we also identified other areas of the city. And this contract would help us uh, identify a, a plan, in other words, in terms of how are we going to address the long-term shoreline protection of these areas within the city, look at programs, plans, and potential funding sources. As a matter of fact, I just submitted a grant application to Wisconsin Department of Emergency Management and FEMA for a, a grant, it, so that's part of this as well. And as well as to help us prioritize the areas, in other words, how are we going to address access, funding, and which areas have the, are, are prioritized over others. Uh, clearly we cannot do all these projects all at the same time, there's just not enough money. They're very complicated in terms of access, permitting, funding. Fulth has a lot of experience on the Great Lakes in doing this type of work. Uh, and what we're recommending is starting this process, entering into contract with them to work with us over the next several years, in other words, to uh, get some plans, get some funding in place, and really try to get some of these areas restored and build some resiliency and protection for our shoreline. Uh, Ryan Sasma, our city engineer, has been instrumental in working with them. And, I, and if there's any other questions, I, I'd also invite Ryan to share some further information if you so desire as a committee. Well, if Ryan's got some other information, it would be great. Would be great. I think this is a uh, really good uh, good idea with, with all that's been happening with the Lakeshore. So go ahead. Yeah. Like David mentioned, at this point, we, we uh, found 11 spots that need erosion. We um, made three of them more of an emergency, one of our storm sewer outfalls on Eisenhower Avenue, uh, the lakefront behind um, Blue Harbor, and also along Broughton Drive. Those are the three priorities. So that's, those are the ones we're probably going to try to go after first to fix. But it, it is, like David mentioned, it is very complicated and expensive because access is always is tough. So yeah. that's, why, that's, that's, that's why we're trying to chase some of these, some of these okay. grants. Okay. I have a question. Go ahead. So I was looking at this, and I think the cost was fifty thousand, if I remember correctly. I'm wondering if that include a design, or is it just for the study? It's it's just for the study. It's just for the study, and also for some of the grant writing. So it's just to determine priority areas, essentially. Yes, exactly, and also, yeah, also, yeah, it'll it'll give us some preliminary design, but not final design, like for bidding purposes. But yeah, we we'd prioritize three spots that, that that we really want to fix right away: Eisenhower Avenue, storm sewer outfall, the uh, erosion or uh, the lake bank behind Blue Harbor, and also along Broughton Drive. So in, in, in addition in addition to that, besides 
prioritizing. It does, it does have some, what I would say, preliminary engineering that will provide us some cost estimates that we will need to have some plans in place actually when we go for grants. So in other words, we're, they're looking at a variety of strategies to address shoreline erosion. And it's not just throwing rock and stone and, and putting hard surface there. They talk about in, the, in their proposal of looking at, at dune restoration and, and, and trying to emphasize some natural uh, protection and still have that balance between you know, protecting shoreline and infrastructure, but yet still making it soft and inviting and have some natural element to it, uh, which, is, which is key. I mean, it, we're, we're working with a variety of agencies. Not only it's the Corps of Engineers, but it's the Department of Natural Resources. And so um, working with this and, and trying to identify these areas and which strategy ultimately is the best fit for that area um, Fulth has that expertise and we're looking, we're looking forward to working with them on that. Alder Kristen Decker. Yes. Yes, Thomas. Uh, just one, one uh, minor point of clarification. Um, in the, the board docs version of this agreement on page six, uh, at the bottom, the formatting got all, all wonky and I'm not quite sure what happens there. Um, but staff will make sure that the, the cleaned up version is attached when it goes to council for approval, assuming this committee uh, sends it forward with a favorable recommendation. Okay, we've noted. Do noted, thank you, Thomas. Any other discussion? Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made by Marcus, second by Rose, I believe. Is that Rose? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Uh, going on, 3.3, 3, uh, deaf child sign discussion. Uh, yeah, the Department of Public Works received a request from the homeowner and parent at 2048 uh, Pine Bluff Lane asking for a deaf child area sign to be installed for the safety of their child to make vehicular traffic aware of this. Uh -huh. um, Department of Public Works have always supported this type of signage as long as the request comes from the parent, mm -hmm. which it has in this case. Um, from talking to Thomas, and he could probably explain this better, it doesn't need a formal common council approval, but I still would like to uh, have the public works support support the you know, this, this signage being installed. Okay. I think Thomas could probably yeah. clean up why it doesn't need a full um, common council approval. Okay. So um, the the nature of, of this sign isn't uh, one where someone's going to be cited for for violating it. It's really an informational sign, uh, just informing drivers that there is that there is something to to be aware of, um, because it's not something that would would lead to a citation. Um, it can be done by the police and the Department of Public Works under their uh, their police power. Um, but as uh, as Ryan alluded to, it's been uh, quite some time since one of these signs uh, was installed in the city. Um, so we thought it was appropriate to, to go and, and present it to you and at, at a minimum take the, take the committee's temperature about, about this type of signage. Um, these are signs that there, there's a lot, of, a lot of discussion nationwide about these signs um, and how both their, their effectiveness and um, sort of how they, how they work with uh, the state, state sign codes and different, different states have landed in, in different places with these signs. Um, they're certainly legal in Wisconsin to have installed, um, but Wisconsin uh, hasn't taken as sort of as clear a, a process as some other states in terms of here's exactly what we want to see. Um, I know New York State has a, a very clear process they've outlined. Um, there, there is a, a provision for informational signs. Uh, this, this meets that, um, but again, as an informational sign, it's not something that's, that's going to result in a citation. 
Hey, hey Dean, I got some questions. If that's sure. Okay. Go ahead, Ryan. Um, I guess I don't know if this is for Thomas or for some of the DPW folks. Um, I guess I, I am all in favor of these signs if it helps the, the, the neighborhood. Um, I guess I just have a few questions just in terms of um, like timeliness of this. Um, you know, what if a family moves after we put this up? You know, is there just, I mean, what's sort of the gauge on that? And then um, what's sort of the general practice and radius of like, you know, how far out you put these or, um, you know, you know how far away from the home you put it you put it right front you put it like at the corner i'm just kind of curious just more about like the logistics of that as well we just want to kind of cover those be awesome. sure ryan scott's yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, ryan i talked to the homeowner the homeowner uh, we told them if if they move they should let the department of public works know because then we'll take the sign down and also when the child turns 18 we also should take the sign down um that's also part of the i guess part of the department policy. Um, this house is located in a cul-de-sac, so we're gonna put it right at the entrance of the cul-de-sac off of the main roadway. So it's, it's that'd, be, that'd be the best spot for it. Okay. Well, I, for one, am in favor of, the, of these kind of signs. I believe that they're, you know, they're good. They, they offer good information for, for the public so that they know what, but you know, that there's someone in that area that's deaf. And uh, so I, 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 I Definitely, uh, in for this. Um, I don't know if any, how anyone else uh, has any other comments on it. I guess that's it then. All right, thank you. That was just for discussion, so we can move on to the next. Uh, next meeting is October thirteenth, twenty twenty. Uh, see, is, is we have exhausted the agenda. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>